guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about, is medical coding stressful? If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so whether you are a medical coding student or you are newly certified and you found your first job and you're wondering, is this a stressful field? Here we go. <laughs> all right, so stress is going to be subjective and everybody manages and handles their stress differently, okay? I can think of more stressful jobs than medical coding. But a lot of times what happens is people get very wrapped up in how they feel and, and what they're thinking and they try to think too far ahead and that brings on stress that's unnecessary. And then sometimes people want to sit here and compare themselves to other coders or compare themselves to veterans. And again, this is unnecessary stress. So we can start to manage our stress by looking at what we feel is, is giving us any kind of pressure or stress uh, because really it's, it's unnecessary. Now it is uh, health information and medical coding. It is a very serious field, but it is a fun field. It's fun for nerds, okay? <laughs> it's, it's, especially if you love to read. You have to love to read. It's 90% of what we do in a day is read. We have to read and comprehend. And then of course everything else is all the other details. But when you are working in this field, as I said, a lot of stress in anything else is going to be self-inflicted. Um, because if you realize and you recognize from the get-go that when you're starting in this, you're not gonna know everything right off the top. You're not gonna understand what everything means getting into your first job. You're not even going to understand a lot of the things that are happening within the first four years. Um, I've said it many times, it took me six years to be fully confident in what I was doing. Now you may think that's a long time, Blue. Full, six years to be fully confident in what I'm doing is different from being competent, okay? Um, I was competent the day that I passed my certification exam, okay? I was competent from that day. However, confidence uh, comes with time and it took me six years to get there. But once I got there and I had that aha moment where everything just sort of uh, lit up <laughs> in my world and coding, I finally understood it and I finally got it. Um, that changed everything for me, you know, and it can for you too, but you just have to allow it to happen. A lot of times people will be so overwhelmed uh, by trying to rush through either a program or rush through trying to learn or trying to get to their productivity standard right away and they're just not used to all of that rather than just sort of taking a step back and if you don't understand something doing your research about it or finding a mentor that can explain it to you or hiring a tutor that can explain it to you you know there's all of those options that you have you know but a lot of times people are just wanting to nitpick about all these things and then just just saying oh no it's too stressful it's not stressful if you learn to manage it it's not stressful it's going to be where like oh this is exciting this is new this is fun this is something different you know a few days ago <laughs> last week um i was tasked to help in another clinic and in this time this is something that is brand new for me was coding infusions right coding for infusions i code in the orthopedic and podiatry clinic I have always coded for like uh, professional fee services. I've coded for neuro and, and um, of course, uh, what is it, rheumatology. I've coded for pulmonary. I've coded for a bunch of different settings, but never once really have I sat down and coded for infusions, okay? And so this was something that was new for me. Now, I didn't mind helping out. I don't mind a challenge. So what I had to do was review um, a lot of the information that was already put out and I was like, okay, and I reviewed my book But there was a lot of people that any any kind of change in their in their regular environment is gonna be like, oh my gosh This is so stressful. It's not and I just looked at it like, okay, I'm gonna take my time I'm gonna learn this I'm gonna figure it out and then I'm gonna move forward, you know because my first inclination is not to run to my supervisor because I know how to do my research if I need something clarified for whatever reason, then maybe, sure, you know. But that's not going to be my first inclination is to run to my supervisor or to be so stressed out that I can't do it. I can, you know. And so that's something that 
you know, take a page from my book, guys. If you are faced with something that is brand new to you and you are you have this credential and you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know anything and, and I'm just so panicked, go back to working on your workbooks so that you can gain that confidence. So that way things can start to be more familiar to you when you're in the real world so that you're not having to sit there and, and wonder and fi try to figure this stuff out when you can stop and look at your resources, look at your coding guidelines. A lot of you don't read your coding guidelines. We know we have this, um, I did the coding guidelines challenge for October, uh, where every October <laughs> uh, we read the ICD-10-CM coding guidelines in their entirety. The goal is to read them four times in the month of October. That is one time per week. Some people don't make it four times per week, four times per month, uh, four times per week, <laughs> four times per month but they make it uh, one or two times, and that's a heck of a lot better than the people who don't read it, right, at all, you know? They get their, their credential and their certification, and they're just thinking that all of the stress of study is over. Studying is not stressful because it is designed to help you to understand even more things. You just have to be willing to put your time into it, and you have to be able to manage and regulate yourself as far as like, okay, this is my time to study so that I can get better, so that I can be more confident, so that I don't have to worry about, am I doing this wrong? Am I doing that wrong? And then you'll start to enjoy it. So going back to my experience coding for um, infusions, it was actually a pleasurable experience because the next day I found myself excited to get to work because I'm like, okay, now I get it. <laughs> after this day of study, right, and, and getting through just a few encounters, um, after that day, I was like, okay, I, I think I can get this. I think I've got this, you know, and of course, I had to, I was tasked with something else to do, and so that had to be put on the back burner again, but it gave me another day to, to look through it more and to be able to familiarize myself with it more, and that was so fantastic. So I really enjoyed that experience. It didn't make it stressful for me because I enjoyed the fact that I had something new to do. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to be back in my clinic. <laughs> I really do. I really want to be back in my clinic, especially because I have new providers that just came in. I have four all together. Um, that just came in and I'm and I'm in the middle of trying to make sure that they are on track and training them and keeping them on on pace where they should be and so that's where uh, I would like to be however <laughs> I am a team player and I don't mind doing and learning new things so that to me was not stressful anybody else it may have been stressful like I don't want to do this and this stresses me out because I want to be in my own clinic everybody wants to be in their own clinic <laughs> the thing that they are most comfortable with but it is also a good thing to, to have those times where you're having to do something different. And it's actually fun when you focus on, okay, I've got to figure this out. So I'm not going to get stressed out about it. I'm not going to beat myself up because I, didn't, I don't understand something right away. I, I have 15 years under my belt. And I had to stop and look at what I was doing in order to be able to know that I'm doing it right. So if that gives you any indication... <laughs> that you can manage your stress as a brand new medical coder. Okay, guys, you can. And the other thing is you can't be uh, comparing yourself to others because that's also where stress comes in. You know, people want to sit here and compare themselves. Well, so-and-so did it or so-and-so has all these credentials and I want to be like them and I, and I, and I want to hurry up and do all these things. You're stressing yourself out and for what? Because you're comparing yourself to another person who's on another journey. You need to stay on your journey. You need to stay on your own path. So that way you're not having all of these other external distractions. You're focused on what you're doing. Okay. Now, yes, competition is a good thing sometimes. Competition brings out the best in people. It can. <laughs> it can bring out the best and it can bring out the worst. Uh, but in, when it's something like this in your career field, you just need to concentrate on you. You need to concentrate on what you're doing. And you need to get yourself as educated as possible. I'm telling you guys, the more you spend with balancing your education and balancing, you know, the time that you spend to learn um, and also develop yourself personally, the more better you're, the better you're going to be able to manage your stress. And so that's something that you ought to know there. I'm not saying that this career field is not without its stressors. It is. It certainly does have its stressors like uh, productivity, 
accuracy. Those are the two biggest ones. But when it comes to productivity and accuracy, you know, there is a, such a thing as, you know, once you get time in, you will start to get faster. You will start to learn your provider's uh, quirks and in, in their documentation habits and things like that, where they put things. So you will start to go much faster. But if it is the beginning, this is not the time for you to get stressed out. All right. Um, if this is the beginning, this this for you is the beginning. Don't worry about trying to keep up with Sue Jane or Sally or Jack, okay? You don't want it to sit here and do all of that. You need to focus on what you have and what you're going to do so that way you know um, that you are doing your best. And that's all you can do is to do your best. But studying is a big part of that. And studying is going to alleviate a lot of that, of that pain that you feel <laughs> from being so stressed out. Um, there's another YouTuber that I watch, uh, Rick from his channel, Think Like a Horse. And he talks about learning the slow way. The slow way is the fast way. The people that I see that are the most stressed are the ones that are trying to rush through a medical coding program in four months or six months. And then all of a sudden they get certified because they were taught to pass a test. And then they get on the real world and they're like, I don't know what I'm doing because you rushed. That's why. That's why you don't know what you're doing. That's why you don't feel comfortable. That's why it doesn't feel organic when you're trying to sit there and be like, oh, I enjoy this. And then like deep down inside, you're like, I don't enjoy this because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. That's why you have to take the time to um, stop and look at all the things that are troubling you, anything that you are confused on, anything that you think that you need to study more. And that's where you need to buckle down and start to look at those books. And if you ask me, well, Blue, I don't know what books to do. I don't know what, they're, they're always in the description box of all my videos, always. All the books that I recommend, the one for E&M, the one for compliance and regulatory, the one for uh, the workbooks that I recommend, all of them are all there, guys. And I have 1,100 videos on my channel, over 1,100. So trust me, <laughs> there is plenty out there for you. You just have to look through. You just have to look through the videos and just to see, you know, what is something that, you know, you need to find reference on somehow, some way. Um, but a lot of what you're feeling in the beginning is going to be growing pains more than it is stress. People like to call it that, but that's not what it is. It's growing pains. And so once you see that, Okay, that's that's what it is. It's not anything that's big, bad, and scary. And I will eventually get this. If you remind yourself of that, you're going to be in a lot better place than the person who's sitting there spinning their spinning their wheels and trying to be so overwhelmed. You can only do one thing at a time. As far as like you know, your learning and everything else. If you know that you're struggling with medical terminology, you need to take the time to learn it. You should never skip medical terminology. A lot of people try to. Um, sometimes they're told erroneously <laughs> by their teachers that, oh yeah, you can skip that and you could just learn it on the job. That's not something that you can learn on the job. The only thing that you can really learn on the job, the electronic medical record, that's what you can learn on the job. <laughs> um, but other than that, no, you know, so let's look for ways to alleviate the, the unnecessary feelings that we feel. If you're rushing to learn medical coding, slow down, slow down. It's still going to be there. Okay. It's still going to be there, but slow down, take your time, get on a good schedule, 20 hours per week. It doesn't have to be all in one sitting. Okay. It can be broken down into 30 minute sessions, one hour sessions. And you do that and you stretch it out over five days. You'll get 17 and a half hours. I've said it before, three and a half hours per day. It doesn't matter if you're a student or if you have your certification and you're out looking for a job, you should still be studying. Now, do you have to study for 20 hours after you have your certification? Certainly not. But again, put in some time, 10 to 15 hours then, okay? Anything that is going to help you to get practice and looking up the codes, anything to make you better, anything to make you more familiar with the material is going to be beneficial to you, <laughs> okay? Um, and then also, like I said, stop comparing yourself to other people. Their journey is not your journey. You don't need to be like them. You don't need to be like the person who's saying, oh yeah, well, I want to get uh, five or six or seven, eight credentials so I can look impressive. No, 
No, if you're brand new, you need to be, you need to have one for the first two years. So that way you can focus and concentrate on the things that are really important, which is learning, you know. I'm not against people taking classes so they can learn something specifically better, right? I'm not against that. What I am against is brand new medical coders trying to get all these credentials thinking that they need them to get a job and when you don't. You just need one. I have never seen a job listing say a candidate must have multiple credentials to get a job, okay? So you can take a little bit of that stress off that way, okay? That you only just need one. And I think it's a lot easier to manage one certification than it is managing four or five or six credentials and you don't even know what they're for, you know? I've heard of that from people that they have all these credentials and they don't know what they're going to do with these, okay? If your job does not require it, you shouldn't get it, okay? And you should only start to build after a while. Take the time to learn now while, you know, you're a student, you know? And accept the fact that you're not going to know everything right out of the gate. But learn to do your research. There is CMS. There is Google. <laughs> and you can put any question into Google. What is modifier 25? What is modifier 24? You could put in any of those. When do I apply modifier 57? Then you're going to have a ton of things pop up. Okay? And then you're going to be able to understand and realize, okay, there's a lot of resources out here. You know, there, what about this particular procedure code or what about that particular procedure code? You could put those into Google and it'll tell you everything that it has based on it, right? So with that said, that's how you can start your jumping off point to, to learning different things or things that you need to be more um, familiar with because of your job. And that's what you have to do. And asking questions is great. But make sure that you've done your research, okay, guys? Don't ask questions without doing your research first because that's what irritates um, veteran coders is when new coders are coming to them with very basic questions. Uh, I know because I talk to veteran coders. <laughs> and they, they all agree that was that's one of the things that they don't like is when somebody brand new asks a very basic question that can be answered quite easily through Google or quite easily by looking through their coding guidelines, okay? So like I said, a lot of this stuff is because it's brand new. You're brand new, all right? Um, these are things that you're going to get used to with time as far as like the coding goes and stuff. So don't stress out too badly. Just enjoy the just enjoy the experience. Enjoy the experience of being new and of having that like that experience like, oh, now I get it. Because when I finally <laughs> got those um, uh, infusion coatings, I was like, oh, I, I got this, you know. <laughs> uh, but to me, that was fun. It wasn't stressful, but it could stress other people out. I could see, but it wasn't stressful to me because I, I figured it out. And it feels good when you when you figure something out on your own. And I always talk about on my channel that I like to make sure that when I tell people on my channel, I like to teach you all to fish. That's the whole goal of my channel is to teach you all to fish. Because there's a saying, it says, um, if you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. If you give a man a fish, you only feed him for a day, right? It should be the other way around. <laughs> You give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man a fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Okay? And so that's what that's what it is, you know. Um, I'm teaching you all to fish, all right, when I say that. And that's the whole goal is to teach you all to fish so that way you all have those skills. Because this, these are skills that are not taught in the school about how to do your research. A lot of these schools, they skip over that or they're just teaching from a book. And that's what they do. They don't want to sit here and tell people all of these detailed things. That's why I have my channel. <laughs> and hopefully it will help you to learn, okay, well, I got to go to CMS or, well, I got to try to put this into Google and see what I can find. Or I got to look at the coding guidelines or, you know, I have to look through the Merck manual or any of those things. Those are all your resources, guys. And like I said, all the books I recommend are in the description box below. And so that's pretty much what I have. But you know, if you are the type of person that gets stressed out because you don't understand something immediately, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle.
because it's not going to be every single day that you're going to do the exact same thing either. Even if you get put into a clinic and you've been in that clinic for <laughs> a while and you get really comfortable with it, they may throw something else at you that they need your help on. And because you're a certified coder, you should be able to take a couple of days to learn it and then be able to be at full speed. Because that's the way this industry is, guys. And expect it. This is what you should expect. It is not an easy job. It is not for quitters. It is not for those that get down on themselves right away because um, there's going to be a lot of people that are not going to want to sit here and, and pick you up uh, because you have to be able to pick yourself up. And I want y'all to be strong. I want y'all to be uh, in, a, in a position where you, you can ten, take back your power, right? You have to be able to take back your power because a lot of people are just giving up their power right away. They feel helpless and they say, oh my gosh, I don't understand this. And I just feel so lost and confused. And they're, they're in that spiral of feeling those feelings rather than taking that energy and putting it into, okay, what is a book I could figure this out on? Let me go ahead and hit Google on this and let me figure this out. That's the way that you should be because that's going to alleviate a lot of your stress right there. Your ability to be able to, to grab that bull by the horns and, and pick up a book and start learning it. Rather than sitting here in that, in that self-pity puddle and, and spiraling because you want to feel those feelings. Those feelings are normal and they're natural, but it should not rob you from your career and learning it and enjoying it. And like I said, even having that experience of... Of going over <laughs> infusions to me was fun, you know, but <laughs> I don't know. It's the nerd in me, you know, but you don't have to be nerd all the way, you know, but you do have to know that this is going to be part of what you do. All right. You have to be able to um, pivot when you need to pivot. You have to be able to be agile and move when you when you're requested because that's what's going to make you a more well-rounded coder. And the more well-rounded you are, the more opportunities you're going to be able to have. And the more you're going to be able to experience in this whole industry. So I'm just saying, there's a lot to experience. But it's experience that is available to those who are open to it. Who are open to having those, those moments of, gosh, I don't understand this or I'm confused. Versus the person who is, oh no, I feel confused. I don't like this. And study. That's all you got to do. I'm just saying. So that's just my advice today anyway. But like I said, don't don't bother, you know, comparing yourself to other people. That takes too much energy. Complaining also takes too much energy. Um, complaining that your school didn't help you, that uh, it was a bad program. Th that takes too much energy, guys. It's done and it's gone. You can't do nothing about it now. All you can do is you're in this situation and coding found you most likely. So you should embrace it and you should look and you should go back through those books. You should get those Optum coding books, even though this is not an ad for Optum, but you all know how much I love Optum. And I love Optum because they are fantastic at explaining um, things and giving tips throughout the book. So the link is in the description box below. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.